All right, good day everybody. And today again, we're continuing on this two-part series of consumer arithmetics under wages and salary. So today we're gonna to look at part one. I thought it wise to split this content here, this concept here into two, simply because I noticed that there's a lot of terms that we should be aware of, or, or terms that we should be familiar with. So we're gonna, in this video alone, we're going to look at the various concepts that you need to know because these words that you will hear a lot under wages and salary. And in the next video, we're going to focus strictly on doing a few examples from a particular textbook, which I will give credit to, right? So let's go. So today, the aim is basically to define the key concepts or terms in relation to wages and salary. We're still on a consumer arithmetic, but this, this concept here brings about a lot of terms that we need to be aware of. So let's just address those today. And in the part two, which will come out tomorrow, God's willing, we will address the, we will solve different problems involving wages and salaries. So just problems, no need to explain definition, just go straight to examples, good? So these are the key concepts that I think we want to define today, not thing that we are going to define today, and there are things that you should be aware of. So we have here wages, salaries, fortnight, commission, annual, overtime, gross pay, and net pay. Only eight words. So this should be a very short video. So let's go. Definitions. So number one, what is wages? Wages, simply put, is the amount of money paid to an individual working on a weekly or on a fortnightly basis. Let's look at it like that. So if I work for one week and I get pay, that pay is considered a wage. Think about it that way. Or if I work fortnightly, and I'm jumping the gun here, but I know fortnight is one of the words we're going to look at. But fortnightly simply means every two weeks, every 14 days. So if I work for one week and I get paid, or if I work for two weeks and I get paid, that payment is called a wage. Good? Salary. Salary, simple, the amount of money paid to an individual after working for a month. So this is just a matter of understanding the various notations, right? They're all about getting paid. What's the difference? Wage, you get paid after a week, after, after two weeks, a fortnight. Salary, at the end of the month. So once you work, you end up at the end of the month, you get paid, you, you got a salary. You don't call that one a wage. As for why, I don't know. I guess that's just the term given to it. Somebody might say, okay, well, I just a double wage because it's a, a month is four weeks, so it's two fortnights. I don't know, maybe that's an interesting argument. Or maybe we could look into it. Why, why not a wage too? I mean, you get paid, it's just two weeks extra and you call it a month. But yes, that, that's the bottom line behind them. Good, moving on. A fortnight, I basically just explained that a while ago. A fortnight is a period of two weeks, right? So you call it two weeks. Um, and it varies based on where you work. Some persons see it as 14, some persons see it as low as 10. And that's given, of course, that you don't work weekends. But Generally, a period of two weeks working, whatever days are considered the working days for those two weeks period. You have to bear that in mind also. Good. Moving on. Here we have now a commission. And a commission is a very interesting one. A commission is basically a fee or a sum of money paid to a certain type of worker or workers, if I should say, after providing a service. It is common after being responsible for a sale or a transaction commonly known as that, but not always. Um, so in other words, some people think that commission is like a tip. And in a way, in a way, we could look at it like that because it's technically, you're getting an extra sum for doing something. But no, commission is unlike a tip, a commission is something that you know you're going into. A tip is something that you could get randomly. So let me say you are a waiter or a waitress and you serve some food for, let's say some, some attendant, some person that came to your restaurant. It is totally up to them and free will up to them if they want to leave you with $100. That's up to them. That is what will be a tip. A commission, on the other hand, no, it doesn't work like that. You actually deserve a commission based on the terms of conditions of wherever you're working. For example, sales company, motor vehicle sales company, they offer commission to workers for selling a vehicle. And the commission, as I said here, is a certain sum of money, usually a percentage. So simple example, if you sell a car, for instance, or if you are the one responsible for selling a car to somebody, you will get a certain fraction for, for being responsible for getting that sale, right? So that is how commission works. I don't know if I'm doing the best, I don't know if I'm doing justice explaining it here for you, but yes, that is a commission. A commission is that fee or sum of money paid to a certain type of worker 
after providing a service. Um, the sale was a service that you provided. If you are a waiter, some waiters get commission based on the recommendation. And some hotels and so on, based on your recommendation or your review, sometimes you get commission on that. But you are not to mix that with tips. Tips is totally free will to the person that you're serving. Good? Let's move on. Then we have annually. Annually is a word that tends to throw up a lot of students. I'm not sure why. But yes, that's why I thought that we should and I'll have a working definition for it. So annually is basically something done on a yearly basis or on a yearly term. A representation of a year. That is what annually means. So if you see any question, well, if you look at the previous video, we saw that the, the person had to pay $600. Um, that's when we did higher purchase. The person had to, have, the person had to spend $600 towards the washing machine on um, 12, or is it? For 12 months. I think they said monthly. So that would come up to a year, technically, annually. But annually would not have been the $600. Annually would have been the 12 months combined. And another word that you will see sometimes instead of annually, and you should be aware of that, is per, per annum. Per annum. Let me see if I could write that. The word is annum. A-N-N-U-M. Per annum. Yes, this is, I think that's how you spell the word by word. I'm looking wrong. But if it is, you could always research it. Don't um, crucify me for it. <laughs> but yes, I think that's the other word. So sometimes you see per annum or you might see annually. Either one you see, is it says the same thing. And all it is saying here basically is that it's on a yearly basis. So I could ask you, for example, what, is, what was his annual salary? What was his salary per annum? What was the simple interest per annum? Or things like that. So be aware of that term. Moving on. Overtime, and overtime again is one that you have to be familiar with, especially when dealing with wages. Not so much salaries, but wages. And overtime, simply put, is the extra sum of money earned after working extra hours. This is usually attached to wage workers at a different and at different rates, right? The various rates that are common to overtime is you have time and a half, you have time and a quarter, and you have double time. When we do the next series, we'll do, I, I think there's a question there with overtime. So I'll explain it deeper there as to how you could calculate the overtime. But yes, once you work in overtime, there's always a rate. And oftentimes, you must know the rate beforehand. So don't think you'll start working today and then you say, okay, today I will feel like working overtime. How much I get into today? No. Different places have the standard rate. And you usually overtime is something that you decide to do. It's up to you, generally. But sometimes, based on the demand of the work, you will you can be asked to do the overtime. And of course, you'll be paid for it. Good. And I know this very well based on the field of construction. Yes, yeah, sometimes, for instance, if you're casting a flow or you're casting something, and you just cannot leave the casting halfway. But it so happened that the working hour is finished for the day. And it's totally fine and okay for your foreman and for your boss or for your boss to let you know, okay. Today, we're going to have to do overtime because we cannot leave this casting halfway. And I know cases like that where it's understandable. Yeah, it might grind you, it might bust your bubble a little for that day if you had, a, if you had plans. But that's how it works. That's how it is, right? But more often than not, it's optional. More often than not, you decide when you want to make an extra money and you stay as long as you want sometimes based on what you do. Good? Moving on, I think we have our last two here. As I said, today should be a very short video. Gross pay. What is a gross pay? Your gross pay is basically the raw sum of money earned after working or payments without any deduction. That might make it even easier. So after you finish work or after you get your pay, let's put it like that. And I don't know, based on where you work, sometimes deductions are made by default. And sometimes you have to make the deductions. I could talk for salary, for example, because I receive a salary. And when I get my salary, there are some deductions that are made by default. There is nothing I could do about it, but because of how much I earn and because of regulations, whatever the case might be, certain things are deducted. NIS, for example, is one of the things that is deducted from my salary. Um, insurance, I think, is another thing that I could recall off my head. And you have different things. So my gross pay would be the amount of money I get before any of those deductions are made. In my case, my gross pay is only a sum on paper. What I actually get is my net pay. And what is the net pay now? The net pay is the amount of money earned after deductions are made. 
So that is what is readily available to me. In some cases, though, I know if you get a salary or wage, you get all your money one time. You need to go make your deduction. So sometimes you get, let me talk about a construction worker, for example. A construction worker might get, let me say, you work in what? $60 a day, 40 hours a week, blah, 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 blah. And by the ending of that week, let me say he gets it $240 by the ending of that week. So he made $240. That is his gross. That is everything you work for, cent for cent, hour per hour, dollar per dollar. That's how much you work for. And now he has to go and make whatever deduction. So whether you have to go and pay bills, you have to go and pay NIS, you have to go and pay insurance, you have to go and pay medical, whatever. Then whatever he remains with will be his net. And mind you, the deduction I'm talking about here are compulsory deduction or, dem or mandatory deduction. I ain't talking about deductions about spending. So if you go and buy groceries and things, no, that does not contribute to deduction. That is you spending your money. That's a whole different story. The deduction here that has to take place with your gross before it becomes net are mandatory deductions. Deductions that have to happen at the end of the month. Well, let me not say have to happen, but happens. Deduction that happens. So if you get your if you get your salary, and here just a stupid example. If let me say one hundred dollars was your wage, or let me say salary. Well, you know you ain't gonna get hundred dollars for salary. But let me say your hundred dollars was your wage. So at the end of the week you get a hundred dollars. And as you get a hundred dollars, let me say you go and buy a lollipop. And then you, you the lollipop is fifty cents. So you spend fifty cents, and now you have ninety nine dollars and fifty cents. Guess what? That ninety nine dollars and fifty cents is not now considered your net. And I hope you understand where I'm coming from. I will leave you with that thought there. Good, so that will bring us to the end of today. Again, as always, like, share, subscribe this video, share it with your friends, share it with your friends, share it with your classmates as we continue this series on consumer arithmetics. We are very close to the end. After salary and wages, we just need to do simple entries and then compound entries, and I will wrap up the series there. So we're coming close to the end. Until then, you take care. Enjoy the rest of your day. Toodles.